Welcome back to Stoneham High School on the last day of summer. I'm Joe Viscioni alongside Nick Bongiorno and you're tuning in for Red Devil football action. Coming into this game, the Devils currently sit in a three-way tie at the top of the Middlesex Freedom Division, coming in at 2-0 on a two-game win streak, and their opponent is the Stoneham Spartans, who also have been having their way, winning their last two games, including a, a last win at Arlington. Burlington's last game was against Woburn, when they won 21-16, led by Kyle Pena. And unlike Burlington, they didn't have to do a lot of running. Pena passed for two touchdowns. Nick, tell me what you saw in that ball game. It was a great ball game, Joe, as you said. Uh, fortunately, you couldn't be there to commentate with me on that one. It was really exciting. Came down to the final play. Burlington obviously did good with the run again. Uh, Woburn did a good job of shutting it down a little bit more. And Pena actually rose to the challenge and made some great passing plays, hit, hooking up with O'Halloran and Pinkham for huge touchdowns. And Jake Doherty obviously ran for a touchdown himself to give Burlington all they needed in 21 points. Uh, they gave up a safety late in the game, and um, <laughs> Ryan Quayley, the quarterback, Woburn, put up a fight and then almost single handed them to a victory. Fortunately, couldn't do it. Burlington tonight definitely want to keep doing what they did, and I think it's going to be a good one against the Stoneham team. Both are doing really well. Stoneham's the favorite. See if Burlington can win. And coming into this game, Stoneham is the favorite, as you said, Nick, with a their favorite to win this one, 28 to 12. Here's the return from number one up the middle. Gets a block. Two men to beat up the sideline. One is Jake Doherty. Takes a block. Nearly tripped up by his own man at the 50. That run back was by Victor Fernandez, the junior running back. Wheelock making the tackle and stopping the big play as the Spartans take over at the 49-yard line. Great field position for this offensive drive. And Nick, speaking of this defense, it's been a pretty big, it's been a pretty big struggle for the Red Devils as they've allowed 28 points per game, the second worst in the Middlesex Freedom Division. Oh uh, yes. Yeah, they gave up 33 points in their first game. 16 points in the other game was a lot better. Obviously, you want to see them improve on the run defense, um, stopping that, and obviously play action because that's for two. Here's the handoff to number 21, eight up the middle. The fullback on the run, and he's wrapped up by number 34 by the Red Devils. That was Phil Nurse making the tackle. Yeah, beautiful and pitch. The Red and Devils right getting there. beat up the middle. Yeah, as we just said, you know, got off the run. First on the play, Stoneham comes out with their blockers doing really well to overpower Burlington's defensive line, get through the holes, and uh, Stoneham with the first down in their scoring position area right already. So it's close, so close in the game. So Robert McAllister, the freshman running back, picking up the first down. Now here's Stoneham in a double tight end set. Loaded backfield, no receivers in the game. Here's the handoff on the power up the middle. Number 26 takes a hit and wrapped up by Phil Nurse, dragged through the legs. Number 26, Agaropoulos on the carry. Last week he had over 112 yards for, for from scrimmage with two total touchdowns in that ball game. Hoping to continue the same effort in this one. Unbelievable again, number 26. We'll see if he can have a Jake Doherty-like night tonight with his running up the middle and his plays and legs. He's already overpowered two straight times, and we'll see if he can do it again. They're probably going to do it. Or And has a man in motion as Agaropoulos. The quarterback is going to take it up the middle on the draw. Picks up the about eight yards on the carry. Deshaun Chase. Chase, who struggled to throw the ball early in the season, has had to depend on his legs and the legs of his running backs. So far, picking up the first down, and that's the third straight first down for this Stoneham offense, having their way with the Red Devils so far. And also including the, spe the kickoff. I don't know what is with special teams this year in Burlington, but they have a very hard time uh, doing anything defensively on it, and also offensively. Uh, and it's weird because it goes both ways. Burlington both um, with Nick, the special teams. This speaking to you about special teams too, that was Wheelock's first time I believe I've ever seen him kick it off all the way down the field other than squib kicks. As a man in motion is Agagropoulos, and he's going to take it up the middle. And it, the running back is going to be stuffed by number 44, Sean McGilvery. Seth Russell there on the carry picks up about three yards. Tommy Spagoon is the defensive end making the tackle at the line of scrimmage. And dominating the line of scrimmage is going to be one important battle for the Red Devils today, Nick. Speaking of it, running is a huge part of the football game. And here they have another one right here. It looks like they're going to just pound it in. Sonam line up in a goal line formation. Here's the play action. And uh, number carry 25, Tommy number Peasy. 25, Tommy Peasy, the fullback, the senior fullback on the carry. He's going to pick up five. about five yards two. on the carry, and that's going to bring that's up a third and short Nick for Campbell. the Spartans. Yep, Nick Campbell with a good block right there. Uh, in terms of just getting up in there and being able to tackle, not being fooled by the play action somewhat. 
And it's third down two. Here's Chase trying to move his offense. On the handoff of the number 26. Picks up the first down and more. Dives across the goal line. And Agaropoulos is into the end zone for the touchdown. The first score of the night of the ball game by the Spartans already showing that they can get into the end zone at will. Set up by that great special teams play to start the kickoff by Victor Fernandez. Yeah, it's a huge motivator when you can right off the bat gain chunks of yards like that. Their quarterback on the kickoff return goes all the way up and just pound, 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 and eventually goes well. I think they're going to run the Here's the two-point two conversion. conversion. Chase is going to run it to his right, going to be pushed. Mm -hmm. Stays Wilson in bounds Wilson and here. Chase is wrapped up and sacked behind the line of scrimmage as the Red Devils pick up their first sack of the ball game, second of the season. And that's going to make it 6-0 to zero with 8.20 remaining in this ball game. Yeah, and Nick, Joe, I an, interesting, an interesting stat for this Spartan team. They have not succeeded on an extra point attempt yet this season. They're 2 of 6 on, on two-point conversions as that's been a huge category where they need to improve upon. Yeah, kicking game has not been good for the Spartans. You could say the same about the Cleveland Browns in the NFL. We're just missing field goals and extra points left and right. Last, I remember two years ago, I'm pretty sure the same thing happened with the Spartans team. Didn't have a kicker, couldn't make anything. And um, unfortunately, they have to go for two points, and that's costly because now it's only 6 nothing rather than 7 nothing. Every point counts in a game that's so tight and a toss-up even like this. And number 52, Antonio. Ventresca, the defensive lineman, is going to set to kick this one off. You don't get to say that too often that your offensive lineman and defensive lineman is going to kick this one from the 40-yard line. Back deep for the Red like Devils this. is Jake Doherty, the star return man and running back. Hopefully he's going to shine through after picking up 425 yards and four touchdowns in the first game of the season against the Bedford he Buccaneers. He had two touchdowns called back in the, in the Woburn game for holding calls as well. Back along with him is Ryan O'Halloran, who had his first touchdown in the game versus uh, Woburn. Now on the fair catch is by the Red 16, Devils. Sean Pinkham. Number 16, Sean Pinkham, the Chris freshman, on the line. catches that one at the 24-yard line. And jogging onto the field for the Red Devils is this offense led by oh, Kyle Pena and Jake Doherty, both Joe, of which are going to need a big game. Uh, um, last Two weeks ago, you know, it was all about Jake Doherty. Last week, definitely about Kyle Pena. He incorporated... A lot of the, they tried the run a lot, wasn't working, and Pena, you know, didn't know if he could do it after the first season he had. It was rough. He came out and absolutely lit it up with his passing yards and went down the field accurately, not intercepting, not having the ball intercepted. Sonam lined up in a cover one zone defense right now. As they're getting some cheers from their fan section in a five man defensive front, Brillington lined up in a stacked formation to receiver set. Here's Pena has McCauley in motion. Lined up as the fullback. Here's the handoff to Doherty trying to make a man miss. Slips by one man and falls up across the 29-yard line before picking up about three yards, four yards after the contest. It doesn't look like a whole lot, but it really matters with those three and four yards. Every single yard counts, and when you can actually not be stopped at the line of scrimmage and keep pushing those legs forward like Doherty does, it can make a big difference come third, second, and fourth down. The Red Devils with an extra lineman set in here. I believe that's... Nick Campbell set up as the fullback. Here's the Red Devils seeing the Spartans loading the line of scrimmage. Pena hands it off to Doherty again. Why not try this one? And he's wrapped up by in the line of scrimmage, led by number 26, Agropopoulos. Yeah, and number eight, work. Kevin McShane, tackle for loss. It's not going to work. You have the first week he goes off. Woburn already was trying to limit him last week, um, and they stuffed the box a lot. This week, you have to admit, Spartans defense very good, and they can they have um, good pass coverage as well, so they don't have to double people with these Bruins and receivers, and they can take advantage and stuff uh, Jake Doherty just like they did there for um, a yoss of yardage. Third and one here, third and long, excuse me, for the Devils. Pena's going to need to pull all the tricks out of his sleeve in this one. Three receivers, four receivers set. One man in the slot is Jake McCauley, the MIAA All-Star last year. Here's Pena, plenty of time protection. Fires downfield, passes intercepted by number six, intended for Ryan Cohane. That is Deshaun Chase, the quarterback, who intercepts it and brings it down to the 35-yard line. And that ball was overthrown of the head of Ryan Cohane as the Red Devils with their first turnover of the ball game and Pena's first interception of the season. Yes, really, really unfortunate for Pena. Pena trying to go deep. Uh, had Rhino Howard with a chance, unfortunately a little bit overthrown and caused interception. He hopefully can bounce back from that. And Relican number six, look at this system. 
You know, you can do everything. Go on special teams, run it back, immediately go on offense. Now we'll intercept the ball. Stay out on that field and help this team win. Unbelievable. Seven, six nothing and uh, so here's, maybe counting. Here's Chase. Going. The handoff is given up the middle to number four, Seth Russell, who goes Sorry, just about about nowhere. Excuse me, that was Tommy Peasy. Tough to see the numbers from here. He picks up about four yards on the carry as defensive end Luke Ward sweeps in to make the tackle, limiting it to a second and six for the Spartans. Coming to the offensive line for the Spartans, led by number 70, Michael Driscoli, their big time center. Here's a loaded backfield set, two fullbacks in the game. Power. Counter up the middle is number 26 on the carry before being stopped up the middle. Agaropoulos, the big man, the carry, has already proved to be pretty dominant in the other games so far this season, having five touchdowns already this year. Well, a lot more, it's more forward we can keep saying. You're going to keep pounding the rock. If the Burlington cannot stop, they're going to keep doing it. If they can, they're going to go maybe play action, go shotgun again. Burlington needs to do that. They're loading up here again. The Devils lined up in a cover two formation. Strong safety is down in the box. Here comes the flip on the run. Straight up the middle, lowers the shoulder, and he's going to pick up the first down easily. Seth Russell on the carry. And that's going to be the fourth first down in the night for the Spartans as they're having their way on offense. Really grading away this Burlington t uh, defense in the run game. With so many um, runs, you would think that you know the play action would be felt for. Um, well, Burlington's falling for the play action. The thing that every once in a while, this great quarterback going to throw it maybe for a big play. They have to respect that option. It leaves it open, and it leaves it up for first downs. And Storm's driving towards uh, the, the second touchdown of the game right now. Jonathan Neal, the senior fullback, also in the game. Man in motion is Agaropoulos. Yep. On the outside, he's pulling on the outside, and he is going to be wrapped up on the eight-yard carry. A great power counter move by the Spartans as they continue to have their way, pushing it closer towards their second touchdown of the first half. I don't know if Dan McKay wants to call a timeout maybe, They're just trying to slow this game down a little bit. It's going to be fast, and Spartans are really close to taking two touchdown lead within the first six or so minutes of this half, so in this quarter. And really, and really, really Burlington, Dan McKay is going to have to try and fire up this team, try and get them motivated to make those tackles, to try and read the plays well, and then they can stop them and uh, maybe switch momentum a bit. Second and, three and reviewing the last two games for the Red Devils, remember they at home had a convincing 43-33 win against the Buccaneers, and Last week, 21-16 win over the Tanners. Man in motion is Agaropoulos. It's going to be a quarterback keeper for Chase. He's going to take it up the middle. And Chase picks up the first down yet again. As the Sonom Spartans have yet to attempt one pass in this ball game. As no receivers has entered the game, the Red Devils are going to need to stop this run game for Stoneham to try to put their very weary and suspect passing game at a risk. Lining up the box is the Red Devils. Carey is going to be taken right up the middle on the fullback draw, and he's going to be wrapped up with the extra effort. Great tackle made by safety Jake McCauley. No gain as the Red Devils pick up their first defensive stop. All right, Jake McCauley, I see you. Very, very good play right there, reading it all the way, immediately not letting them go up with that um, Little fullback run, just stuffing him there right immediately. So just over three minutes remaining, the Red Devils trying to force the Tanners out of their defensive territory, starting it around the 16-yard line. Here's the handoff given up the left side. Has a man to beat. Here, there is Chase Adams, and he is down across four, Seth, Russell. Seth Russell. Excuse me on the carry. Good for a first down. He's going to be wrapped up inside the 15-yard line. Marked at the nine-yard line. And down Tackle at the nine. Number 46, Nick Campbell. First down at the nine-yard. So line. Nick Campbell pulling into that strong side linebacker role has definitely had a great couple games so far, proving that he can step in alongside Sean McGilvery. Here's Deshaun Chase. Chase drops back. He's going to give it to his man up the middle. Once again, no surprise on the carry. Inching closer and closer towards the end zone. Agaropoulos fighting for his second touchdown in the ball game, but comes up just short. Tackled by number 77, Andrew Woods. Second down at the two-yard line. 
Uh, Brolin looks all in shambles right now, Joe. Uh, it's not going to be, I believe, until one play later that this lead is going to be extended to at least 12 nothing right here. Can't stop them. The Red Devils facing a 6-0 to zero hole. Here is Deshaun Chase. Chase is going to hand it up to Agaropoulos. Seth Russell, excuse me, on the corner. Cannot get around the edge before being wrapped up. Number four, Seth Russell stopped just short of the goal line. By Sean McGilvery coming over to make the tackle. Excuse me, that was Phil Nurse, Phil Nurse the, the sophomore linebacker who makes the tackle, and that's going to force the Sonoma Spartans to another third and short. The last four third downs, it's been a run every play from the Spartans. Let's see. No wide receivers in the game as both teams line up the box. Here's Chase. Chase is going to give it up to his man, Agaropoulos, and he is into the end zone for a touchdown as the Spartans take the lead 12 to 0. Their second touchdown of the ball game, getting screams and cheers from their fan section as Stoneham showing why their 2 and 0 record as they currently lead the Devils 12 to nothing in the first quarter. And they stay on the field for the two point conversion. Chase is gonna try this one. As we mentioned before, they're 0 for 4 on extra point attempts. So definitely a chance that they try that. Here's the counter play up the middle. Agaropoulos lowers the shoulder, and he's in for the two-point conversion, bringing the score to 14-0 with just under two minutes remaining in the first quarter as the Stone of Spartans take a convincing two-possession lead over the Red Devils. Nick, the Red Devils only with two plays offensively before that interception by Pena. What do they need to do to get going offensively? Well, I'd be worried about all sides of the ball now, but uh, offensively, Penny just has to wake up a little bit. I think that his last interception, he knows it's on him a bit, overthrowing his man. Just keep his eyes downfield like he did in the Woburn game. His, his receivers are good enough. They'll get open. They just have to make sure they don't drop the passes because he can sometimes lay it on a dime. And then if they get a touchdown, momentum can swing. It's a very, 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 very rocking of a seaboat type game. And the Spartans so far in this game proving to make this very much of a battleground as they currently have the 14 lead. Great fan support, not too great at the beginning of the game. The Red Devils, hopefully more people could show up to support their hometown team. The Red Devils 2-0, the first time that they started out 2-0 in the season was back in 2012 when they came second in the Middlesex Freedom Division playoffs. Here's the onside squib kick, and that ball is going to roll out of bounds. Out of bounds. And that's going to be a flag on the field. Cannot kick the ball out of bounds on the kickoff. So the Red Devils get great field position, and they're going to start with it around the 35-40 yard line. As powder and smoke pours across the Stoneham Spartans supporter section. As here's Kyle Pena on this led offense jogging on in the field. And this offensive line is going to need to have their way. It's all about winning up front. And so far, the Red Devils, at least defensively, have not been too convincing yet. That part of the field. The Red Devils, historically and so far in this season, a great first half team scoring more than half their points in the first half. Second half is where they trail off. So it would be important for the Red Devils to score early in this ball game. Already one quarter is almost gone by. It's just completely wasted the clock in terms of all the runs Stoneham has been able to successfully do, and it's, it's not going to be good for Bronson. They have to, first of all, defend and have to get Kyle Pena going and the offense so that they can have him a chance, and it's going to be a shootout. Two receivers two set, one of which Ryan O'Howard, who had a touchdown last week and finally got going, the sophomore all-star selection. Here's Pena has McCauley, the fullback, in motion. A-gap blitz. Doherty, and he's going to be wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. The offensive line could not quite get a hold of that inside A-gap blitz by number eight for Stoneham, Kevin McShane on the tackle. And that's going to be a second and long for the Red Devils. Jake Doherty, I don't think that, especially with the lead now, Burlington's wants would want to expose um, if there's any holes in this gap of the defense, but they're not going to let that happen. They're going to make Kyle Pena beat them, if anything, especially with this lead being taken so early. Not what you want to have. Jake McCauley lined up on the outside as number 25, Thomas Prezi, in coverage. That's a big height advantage now over there. Going, there's Good Pena pass. dropping back, fires, ball incomplete, intended for number 11, 
Uh, Tim Pinkham, as that, Matt Pinkham, excuse me, as that ball falls out of bounds across the sideline in front of head coach Dan McKay, who's not too happy with his team so far. Well, he has nothing really to be happy about, nothing going well. They can't block. Jake Dory has been stuffed a couple times. Kyle Pena's a little bit off, needs to get a game, and his defense have been non-existent. So everything has to be a bit better, as Bill Belichick would say in his press conference. And the Spartans playing in a full man front. Yep, you can third see a 15, blitz coming from them. the inside linebacker. Here's Kyle Pena trying to make one man jump off sides. Eight man, facing a Facing a third and long. Here's Pena, drops back. Pena has plenty of time, feels the rush, fires downfield, and that pass is overthrown. Missed Matt Pinkham just a couple yards off, and that is going to force a fourth down as Cam Wheelock comes on the field to punt this one away for the first time tonight. Yep, not good by Burlington. Uh, Pinkham, he got a very good touchdown pass last week for the game winner, essentially, in Mooper, oh, excuse me, hooking up with, um, <laughs> Kyle Pena after the, after the, the, the pump fake went deep down the left side. No one caught on that time. Unfortunately, Pena overthrown again and uh, couldn't connect. Now we have to see Seth Russell and Chase oh, back deep. Snap. Here's Wheelock just gets this kick off, and that ball is going to fall short right across the 45 yard, 35 yard line, 45 yard line. Excuse me. And Wheelock barely got that kick off as the Spartans take over with fantastic field position as the Red Devils have been plagued so far tonight, special teams wise. Uh, I can't, can't, don't want to watch this. Burlington not been playing the way they've been playing in the past two games. They're doing some of the things they were doing in the first season, Dan McKay. Horrible, horrible, horrible long snaps cost the Devils and forced Cam Leelock to make punts that didn't want to make and put him in uncomfortable positions. That was another example. Now, great field position and a chance for a three possession lead for the Spartans. Here's Deshaun Chase, he's gonna move it on the quarterback keeper, lowering the shoulder, and he's going to be stuffed for a tackle for loss. Coming in, making a sec second effort, and number 44, Sean McGilvery, is going to get hit with the flag on the late hit. Personal foul against McGilvery. Yeah, McGilvery, not what you want to do there. He's, they're, they're going to call it all the time. Some fans, yes, we know it's a late hit. That's why they threw the flag. Um, um, so we just have some crazy fans in our section next to us. This makes it hard to call straight. I'm very sorry for the inconvenience. Yeah, but you can't do that when a person's going to the ground. You have to make sure that, if anything, you just don't do anything else. He's going to go down. You can't hit him from behind. It's a danger. They're really protecting players, and Sean McGeeber's going to get flagged. And the tackle is already being made. I believe it was just a late hit on McGilvery, and that's going to be a 15-yard penalty against him. And that's one of those penalties you definitely want to avoid. Pretty easy to stop as Chase was clearly down already. Now here's Chase back in the shotgun. He's going to give it to his man, number 26, Agaropoulos. And he's wrapped up up the middle for a seven-yard gain. Five yards, excuse me. Tough to see the first down, Marty. The yardage from here. And in recent history for the Red Devils, the last time they won a bus, they won against the Stone and Spartans was three years ago. And that's the end of the first quarter as the Red Devils currently in a deficit, 14-0 against the Stoneham Spartans. And the Red Devils really need to improve this offense and, uh, and defense, basically all sides of the ball, Nick, if they want to get back into this ball game. And, to, and if I'm Dan McKay, I'm not too happy with my unit. Coming off two wins, it seems like the Red Devils have been complacent in the first half. Definitely something you want to try to patch up and fix at the end of the first quarter. The Spartans, while have been pretty prepared for this ball game, their offense has been pretty much one-sided as they have not attempted a single pass this entire game, running mostly power and counter plays. Nick, if you were the Red Devils, what would you do to try to stop this Stoneham Spartan team, given that they haven't even attempted a pass all ball game? Well, at this point, with them destroying you on the run game, I, I, you have to defend the run. Go full out, make them, even though they've been doing that already, so it's kind of, you feel it's a little bit hopeless right now, unless they can get something, or a pep talk, or something um, switched around. 
They've been trying to load up the box, hasn't been working. They really got to go all in there now because no receiver has ever split out to the left. Not a single pass. You have to make Sodom pass if you're going to win this game and stop clock and um, them from scoring. Chase in the backfield has Agaropoulos. Man in motion is number there, there 26. There's a pass. He's going to pass it for the first time, stuffing the box, firing downfield over the heads of his intended receiver. Passion that was front, number, number eight, Kevin, number eight, McShane, Kevin McShane, McShane as that ball falls out of the end zone, incomplete. One, and Nick, as we talked five. about it, the Red Devils really showing that they were trying to stuff the box and stop the run there. And they almost got caught off guards as Sonam could have made it a three possession game. No, I think that was actually what they wanted to do this whole game. They uh, made sure they had a lot of people in the box that they would stop, and then they took it up to their coverage. There was good coverage right there. wasn't going to catch that ball. It had to be really, really perfectly thrown, which was not. First pass of the game for Stoneham, and, um, and Burlington now has a chance. The play, like call is, five. the play call is going to matter just depending on what the two safeties do. Here's the pitch to Seth Russell. Russell trying to cut back inside, and he's going to be wrapped up Sorry, up the middle four, just short of the first Russell. down. The and Nick, I think, honestly, you can really tell – if this is going to be a run or a pass, based on if the two safeties, your free safety and strong safety, if they're coming down into the box, Stoneham and the Spartans are going to try to pass this one. But if they are playing close near the line, far away from the line of scrimmage, it's going to be a run. Fourth and one for the Spartans. Getting some chance from their loud fan section. As it's going to bring up a fourth and one. Yeah, maybe just quarterback sneak this. Or give it to the fullback. Here's Chase. Pitches it over to his fullback up the middle. Yep. First down and more. Tackled sure, by the inside the linebacker. Good and good strong good. safety, Jake McCauley, his second of the ball game. Seven, Jake McCauley. And that's going to be a new set of downs for the Spartans as they have First yet to have been stopped offensively by the Red Devils. Their first score was a touchdown. Their second was a touchdown rush as well as the Red Devils have yet to force a punt from this talented Spartan off offense. And historically, the Red Devils have not been too lucky against the Spartans. Now back onto the field with a loaded line of scrimmage. Handoff is given to Agaropoulos up the middle, has a convoy of blockers, and he's going to be Third wrapped up. 25, Tommy, Peasy. Tommy Peasy, excuse me, forward progress is going to give him about Welcome three yards on the carry. Field. So the one shining spotlight for the Red Devils so far has been Nick Campbell in the run defense already with his fourth tackle of the ball game. Both teams coming to the line of scrimmage. Here is Chase. Chase has a man in motion. Handoff once again to number 40. And he is in for the touchdown. Jonathan Neal, the fullback, runs it in. Pretty much walks it in, no one in front of him. And that's going to make the score 20 to 0 in favor of the Spartans with just under nine minutes remaining in the second quarter as the Red Devils defense looks decimated so far. Yeah, you can say that, so 20 0 deficit. I don't know what else you're going to do. This run game is completely obliterating Wellington's defense right now. On for the two point conversion. Back under center is Chase, has one receiver in the game on the outside. Handoff is given straight up the middle to the fullback, Agaropoulos, and he is in for the two-point conversion, making the score 22 to zero in favor of the Spartans. The Red Devils yet to respond in this one, mustering only two first downs in the ball game as Kyle Pena has not had a bright spot. He's 0 for 4, including one interception, which he threw to Deshaun Chase earlier in the ball game. Hopefully, Pena can get on a cue with his receivers and his quarterback, no, excuse me, and his head coach, Dan McKay, and they can try to draw something up to get the Devils going. Defensive coordinator Pat McGee is definitely not happy with his defense in this ball game. Of course, there's not much you can do when your offense hasn't mustered any first downs or much yardage in this ball game. It's very tough for the defense to have to go on the field, give up a touchdown, and then get, come right back onto it two minutes later because your offense couldn't get anywhere. So that's definitely on the Red Devils' mind at this point. Two men back to receive this one is Ryan O'Halloran and electrifying return man Jacob Doherty. Here's the kickoff from number 52, Antonio Vitresca. Onside kick, not testing Doherty. The ball popped loose. Here's O'Howaran. O'Howaran making a man miss. 
And he's wrapped up across the 30 yard line. Tackle made by Stoneham. Looked like a bit of a nasty hit uh, on the fumble. He had to pick it up. And no one blocking. Immediately just gets decked uh, with his head running down low. You want to keep it up. First and 10, Unfortunately, for really not having any momentum so far. want to try and, and, and reverse it. Stoneham proving to have a pretty big lead, and that's going to force the Red Devils to probably pass it on first or second down. And that really f frees up this defensive line and linebackers for Stoneham to get a couple extra pass rushing snaps and really get after the quarterback and try to pad their stat sheet with a couple sacks. Lined up in a four-point stance, and you can tell that they're going to run straight at the quarterback. Here's Pena has Doherty to his right. Four-man receiver set. Play action pass. Wide receiver screen to Jake McCauley. Making one man miss, and he's escaping. First down and more. The Red Devils, and they are down across the 30-yard line. Ryan O'Halloran showing that he can make a man miss, picking up a first down. First real action offensively for Bruins of the game. They had a couple of first downs. A pick, uh, just a bad, bad punt. Uh, it's not been going well at all. Defense not been going well. This game is very far from over. Uh, Here's Pena. Bruins has to do well. Here you can see. Two Here's Pena. Out left. Four receivers set. Two to the right, two to the left. Pena steps up, pressured up the pocket, fires it. And that ball was flipped out of bounds with no Burlington receiver near as the pressure was coming from up front and behind him as Pena was forced to throw it out. The offensive line, Nick, that's always been a problem for the Red Devils, and it seems like they're, they've always been a great run blocking team, but the pass blocking has been an issue. Yeah, Here's that's P why they do all these screen passes. They can't block too well. Here's Pena it's back in the shotgun, has Jake Doherty with him. Five foot eight, Jake Doherty takes the handoff up the middle and he's gonna be wrapped up across the 37 yard line. And that is going to Tackle by number eight, Kevin McShane, and number 40, John force Neal. a third and third six, six in the 38 for the Red Devils. Ryan Colhane back into the ball game. Colhane having a great game versus the Bedford Buccaneers, including a touchdown, he also played running back duties. Now back on the field as a slot receiver. Coming to the line is Kyle Payne trying to get his offense going. As a four receiver set, three to the left. Here's Pena. Pushes, sidesteps around the blitz. Pena's gonna run it himself, lowers the shoulder, takes the hit. And Pena looks to be just short. Of the first down, Nick, I don't know about you, I don't like to see my quarterback lower the shoulder and take those big hits. That's uh, sacrificing his body on the line. And you gotta do that when you're down by 22 points, trying to get the crowd into it, you know, with the, with the shoulder hits thing, to your team also as a motivational factor that we can still do this and we can uh, possibly win this game and um, I'm doing whatever it takes for us. Pena, good captain. job avoiding the rush earlier on that play as McKay's gonna call the timeout at, the Red Devils second time out of the ball game is it's going to be a fourth and short trying to get this offense going and a first down would be so big for this Burlington Red Devils offense if they have yet to muster really anything going offensively. The Red Devils coming into this game, ball game scoring 43 points per game in their past two games against the Bedford Buccaneers and the Wolverine Sanders but this game is completely different against this talented Stoneham Spartans front. A beautiful night for a ball game. A little chilly as it's the, uh, officially the last day and night of summer. Next day will be fall as the Red Devils hopefully can start f off fall 3-0 and and ahead of the Middlesex Freedom Division. Jake Doherty back there in the I formation. Pena has an extra full back in the ball game. Trips over to the right. Pena drops back. Need Doherty on the down. carry, first down and more. Showing that agility, making one man miss. Doherty again, and he's wrapped up inside the 10 yard line. Jake Doherty finally breaking loose as the Red Devils are getting closer towards picking up their first TD of the night. There we go, finally, just burst through the lines. Use that offensive line that you have. Don't let Stoneham, even if they know it's going to be a run, don't let them overpower you. They do the walking well. They create the gaps. Jake Doherty, agile, strong, goes through and almost gets a touchdown. Here's now Pena. Give again. it back to Doherty once again, and he's going to be stuffed. Big step in second one, effort from Stoneham. Main tackle. Stuffed at the five-yard line. It was made by number six, 
Deshaun Chase coming in there, the strong safety to make the tackle along with Kevin McShane, picking up his fifth of the first half. Now here's back with Pena. Two receivers to the left, two fullbacks in the game. And off is given to Doherty, trying to oh, around the edge, and he is stuffed for a tackle for loss. Great tackle made by number 52, 80, Antonio Von Tresca, the kicker and defensive lineman making the tackle. That's two straight. You can't rely on all the time, as we said. They obviously, they want to keep having optimism in Doherty after that huge run he got almost at the touchdown, but you have to score here. Six points plus is necessary. As the Red Devils, the clock continues to be their enemy with just about five minutes remaining in the second quarter. Here's Pena trying to pick up the touchdown. Drops back, plenty of time, pressured, fires it. That ball yeah! sails over the heads of Seth Russell, who is in coverage. And that's going to bring up a fourth and short for the Devils as it's fourth down territory, and they're going to go for it. Yep, field goal does nothing good for you now. You need those points. Down 22 to zero is the Red Devils with just about 5.30 remaining in this first half. Pena coming to the line of scrimmage. Four receivers set, two receivers split out to each side. Has Doherty in the backfield. Stoneham showing a five-man rush. Fires, that pass is caught and looks to be intercepted in the end zone by the Spartans as Pena throws his second interception of the ball game as the fans cheer, forcing the Red Devils to another turnover. Yeah, not gonna go any worse right now, Joe. I don't have words, Pena, second interception of the game. This defense is doing a great job into thinking, making a thing it's gonna be one coverage and they go in and they just, they blitz or they send in more people down to the coverage and it's almost impossible. Great job, great mentality, great game plan so far by Storm. And really with not too much time left in the second half, all Bruins needs to do is try and prevent another score because that's and not, that's gonna pretty much end the game effectively if and Storm win, if Storm scores again. And talk about unfortunate for the Red Devils, the ball is intercepted inside the red zone, so that's gonna be a touchback. Instead of having in a good... Now here's Russell, the handoff to Agaropoulos, trying to make a man yep, miss, and he's gonna be wrapped up into the secondary. First down made, tackle made by Jake McCauley, and number 21, Ryan O'Halloran. Sean McGilvery also coming in to wrap it up from the legs. First down on the 32-yard line. Agaropoulos has been having his way tonight. Sean McGilvery's doing what and he's doing. Timeout is going to be on the field. Timeout for Arlington. Other games that are going on currently is the Melrose Red Raiders playing the Watertown Red Raiders. The Wilmington Wildcats first place, 2-0, taking on the 0-2 uh, Wakefield Warriors. Of course, the Sonam Spartans and the Red Devils. The Belmont Marauders at the Woburn Tanners, who the Red Devils beat last week. And the 2-0 Lexington Minutemen taking on the Reading Rockets. As we spoke before, the Red Devils currently sit in a three-way tie for first place in the Middlesex Freedom Division. And a win tonight would put them even closer to trying to inch closer and closer towards that elusive Middlesex Freedom Division crown. This jug. defense needs to stand. This defense needs to make something happen. Another touchdown, and the game is not going to ever be shifted back in favor of momentum for Burlington. The defense needs to play well for the offense to play well. It's always how it is. Or vice versa. Just got to spark each other up. Man in motion. Handoff is given up the middle. Number 40, and he's going to be dropped and tackled by the legs. A touchdown saving John tackle Neal. almost by Ryan O'Halloran. The only person that they're fooling more then the Bruins Red Devils defense on these little Tackle runs is my camera because I every I always think that one person has and the other person just running up the sideline. Burlington just they're doing a great job of hiding the ball and just giving it off to someone and getting the blocks in where they need to. Great execution by uh, Storm. Agaropoulos back into the game after the five-yard carry. Second and five here for the Spartans. Handoff is given to Agaropoulos on the counter play. Pushing outside, Agaropoulos lowering the shoulder and down across the 45-yard line into Red Devil territory. 
a great pickup from him. As the Red Devils being unable to get it to the outside in Agaropolis and this Spartan offensive line taking advantage of it very early in this ball game. Just about four minutes and 30 seconds remaining as the Red Devils are scoreless so far in the first half, struggling mightily offensively and defensively. Hopefully they can get a stop on this drive and make it still a three possession game. Loaded offensive front, man in motion is number four to Seth Russell. Russell on the carry, trying to push outside, gets a couple yards after the contact. Forward Sorry, progress is going to have him pick up about two to three Seth yards on the carry. On Although you would have to say sometimes in these games you want to see them throw the ball more. Obviously high school is a definitely run center league. But you want to sometimes see them go down the deep. Even for um, Bruce Stoneham, you know you're winning 22 to nothing. Maybe take a shot down the field with your uh, quarterback to see what he's made of rather than just keep doing these fullback plays. And Nick, Obviously, you have a game plan, though. And Nick, a lot of that question comes down to what we talked about last year when Dan McKay implemented the 4-2-5 nickelback formation, five defensive backs taking out a linebacker, as it really shows that the Red Devils are unable to stop the run. Maybe an extra linebacker would help them there. Now, here's... The carry up the middle, number one, trying to sell that one, Victor Fernandez. But Agaropoulos is going to pick up a couple yards on the carry. So McGilvery making the tackle, and that's going to force a third and short yet again for the Spartans. The Red Devils, Nick, have done well on first and second down defensively, but those third downs has really been what's killing them. Exactly right now, here, see if we can stop them. Hasn't shown any signs of that yet this game. Burlington showing an A-gap blitz. Five-man oh, rush, and he is wrapped up. Fernandez leading the way 46. by the Red Fernandez Devils. Number 46, number 46. Nick, Nick Campbell, Campbell making the tackle for loss. Fourth down, and it looks like the Spartan special teams unit comes on to punt this one away for the first time of the night as the Red Devils get a key stop. As long as you can get some momentum right here, you know we have a punt, you're going to be pinned back deep. Hopefully that can spark the offense and get receivers open. Kyle Pena may be more accurate, just more motivated. All together, let's see if they can get something here because you don't want to go down 20 by three scores in the second half. You much better to score last Second in the last two minutes in the second half and cut the lead down to two deficits. Jared Grassels, the backup quarterback and punter, set to kick this one off. Back deep is O'Hauer and Hyatt. High end flying kick, and that ball is going to take a great roll and fall inside the five yard line at about the three. Fantastic punt, terrible field position for the Red Devils. Not too quite sure about Ryan O'Halloran's option to let that ball roll instead of make the fair catch. Yeah, not a good option there. A little bit like Cyrus Jones, I would say. Uh, this is not just letting the ball roll by you instead of just catching it is going to put Bones in negative yardage here instead of having it at like the 15 they have at the five. Well, oh, two really bad. Now the chance of a safety, Joe. Well, Nick, I wouldn't quite put a Cyrus Jones label on O'Hauer in. If you were to hand Cyrus Jones a watermelon from a one foot away, he'd drop that one. So I don't think O'Hauer is quite at that level yet. Nonetheless, yet. <laughs> Kyle Pena comes onto the field. Uh, with his no, offense well, trying to get their first that. score of well, the game. in the punt return game and just overall in terms of how he plays the high school is a lot better than how Cyrus Jones plays in the NFL. We'll get that straight. Yes. The Red Devils needing 98 yards to go to, to the end zone. Here's Pena, oh, drops oh. back, fires this one away. Might call that Nearly pushed out of the end zone. A, that could be an intentional grounding, but I don't no know call there. I don't know. He might have been getting out of the pocket there. Second Pass was intended for no one in the area. The closest man was Victor Fernandez on Sto uh, for Stoneham. Stoneham trying to force a safety. It would be their first of the season. They had two last year. And here comes the Stoneham Spartans trying to load up this box. In man coverage, cover two. Here's Pena. Pena, five-man rush, oh, pressured again, sick. trying to run to his right, fires on the go, that pass is oh. caught, wide open field, and he is one man to beat Matt Pinkham, and he is gone for the touchdown, Ryan O'Halloran. Ryan O'Halloran. Goodbye, got by the man. Pena extending the play, and O'Halloran picks up the first touchdown of the night. How do you like that, Devils? Oh, it's beautiful. They bring a blitz, all-out blitz on Pena. Pena able to avoid it, rolls out to the right, 
Bit of a lucky pass, just over the head of the defender. Looked might have been intercepted. In fact, caught exactly opposite by O'Halloran. Nobody behind him, and how fast he is. We just said he's a lot better than what Cyrus Jones is. Proves it there again. Second touchdown of the season, and the Devils have life with a minute 34 and, to go. And we've really seen some growth from Kyle Pena standing in the pocket, yep, extending the exactly. plays. Wouldn't have seen. been able to make those throws in years past. Now here's Wheelock on the there point after okay, attempt. Well. And he's good. Cam Wheelock making the score 22-7 to as the Red Devils strike on the board with 134 remaining in the ball game. Providing some life for Burlington. Yep. And if you can take this lead, if you can take it and store it and then get yourself only down by 15 points when a game that you really could be down easily way more into uh, the, the locker room, then Pam McCase will be happy and they might have some life and maybe readjust the game plan based upon how Stone has played. And Burlington just want to make sure they don't score here, don't give Stone back uh, momentum because if they do that, they might not ever have a chance in the second half. As Stoneham giving up their first touchdown of the ball game. Last week they gave up 22 points, excuse me, 23 points to the Arlington Spy Ponders. The Red Devils putting seven points on the board. Their season average is 42 points per game. Uh, number one in the Middlesex Freedom Division. And on there, Kyle Pena showing why he was an MIAA All-Star last season. Pena's stat line tonight includes over 90 yards passing, one touchdown, and two interceptions. Hopefully he can change that stat sheet later in the ball game. See if they might squib this, trying to get a fumble possibly. Here's Wheelock set to kick this one off. Cam Wheelock, last year, unable to kick the ball downfield. We've definitely seen an improvement from him. Wheelock. There we go. Low kick, but down to the 25-yard line. This one's returnable for Chase. Chase getting outside, and he's going to be wrapped up. A great tackle made. Kevin McShane. McShane on the carry. As the Red Devil special teams unit finally gets their stuff together. Yep, beautiful kick by Cam Wheelock. Not squibbing and not onside kick, not pooching it. Just beautiful. Use your strength. Use that leg. Kick it all the way down. Force them to come out, not into the end zone. So they're not going to fair catch that. And then unlike other games where they were letting people get to the 30, immediately stop them and put themselves in good field position, maybe even to get the ball back with some timeouts. This week it's the battle of red versus blue. Stoneham pretty pumped up for this matchup, trying to go 3-0. It would be their third, second straight year in a row that they started out the season 3-0. Yep, they might want to run the clock out, as we said here. They're going to try and run and keep doing what's Just successful. about 127 remaining. No reason for Stoneham to be conservative. Here's the handoff to Seth Russell on the outside play. Russell picking up more, and he's wrapped up four, Seth Russell. across the 28-yard line. Nine-yard gain for Russell. And Russell last week by ran for two Ryan touchdowns from very short-yarded situations. He's one of the smallest backs on the roster, but definitely can pound it. And picking up about nine yards on that carry. Now back to play. Here's Chase. Chase is going to hand it over to Agaropoulos. Oh, nice moves. Agaropoulos nice moves. making nice a man moves. miss into the secondary. Oh, wrapped up nearly by the helmet. So Agaropoulos, what a carry from him. And he's going to force it into the Burlington Red Devil territory. Yeah, take the timeout, Stoneham. And that will stop the clock. And Stoneham with no timeout call. It's Stoneham trying to continue to run the clock down across the 35 yard line Seth Russell play action fake fires down chase that passes on the same page in the area intended for number 11 Sean Lavaresi as they were a little miscued on that play that was Stoneham's only their second pass attempt of the entire ball game and it fell incomplete yeah, both passes incomplete and that's not on the same page that time at all with his receiver number 31 So Stoneham coming to the line of scrimmage with 31 seconds remaining in the second quarter, trying to get onto the board for the fourth time of the night. Here's the pitch over to Agaropoulos, and he's going to be wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Second time today by Jake McCauley. And McCauley picks up his second tackle for loss of the ball game. Jake McCauley, timeout Stoneham. Now they take that timeout. Agaropoulos slow to get up, and that's going to stop the clock with under 30 seconds remaining. In the second quarter is the Red Devils defense. 
slowing Stoneham down at times, but still struggling in this ball game, Nick. Yeah, they're struggling a little bit. That one right there, that's just like really hard to defend when you have a guy who's struggling like beast mode. Number 26 of Stoneham just running up that one with five guys holding on to him and he eventually goes down to 30. Burlington needs to stop here with fourth and eight, uh, third and 10, excuse me. And, uh, and Stoneham, Stoneham running a lot of counter, jet sweep, and power plays, meaning that your guards and tackles have to be agile and mobile to pull around the corner and get some blocks. So far, Sonam has been really successful on those running plays. You can either go for a lot of yards or basically nothing. Oh, and man start. jumps off sides. That's going to be an false encroachment. False start against the offense. Stoneham picks up their first penalty of the ball game. And that's only the second penalty that we've seen all game. As that's going to bring up a third and 14 for the Spartans as they're in an obvious passing situation. Sonam lined up in the loaded line of scrimmage. Burlington showing a good defensive front. Here's Chase, drops back, pressured up the middle, scrambles to his left, flag on the field. Chase escapes out of bounds before being wrapped up. Nearly got the first down. And they say he did. Unless the penalty is going to come down. Let's wait to see the penalty. Tackle him. If that's going to be a first down, that's horrible tackle. Looked like it was a holding. Six yards they can't get his feet out. So Stoneham picks up the holding that was pretty easy to right. see on the good. left tackle. Okay, that was good. That's going to be a 10-yard penalty and bring up a third and 24. The Spartans as the clock ran down on that play. As there's just about eight seconds, seconds remaining. Nine seconds. So Stoneham with back-to-back -back penalties. Definitely unfortunate for the, them as the Red Devils locked out as if that play stood, it would have been a first down for Chase, showing his wonderful scrambling abilities. Yep, their scrambling ability. Now it's a really long third down. I think they're just going to run off the clock. It's going to the second half. Yep, I believe they're going to run off the clock. And we're going to the second half. Here's Stoneham. Burlington lined up in a cover three formation. The end of the first half. And that is going to be the end of the first half as the Red Devils are down 7-22 to here in Stoneham, Massachusetts after scoring that long 87-yard touchdown reception by Ryan O'Hower and giving the Red Devils life. And Nick, it's been a tough game for the Red Devils. What do you expect to see from them in the second half when McKay can make those offensive and defensive adjustments? First of all, they were in the dead. They were getting absolutely blown out of the water here, 22-0, and still 22-7, uh, not the greatest, but definitely momentum's a big thing. They got the last touchdown. They needed that. It was a good drive. It's a little bit lucky, but you need luck in this game. Pena doing what he hasn't done, what he didn't do last year, showing what he did last week and the week before. Rolling out to his sides and finding O'Halloran for a touchdown. No one's going to catch him. Unbelievable by Burlington, and maybe they hopefully can stop the run, which they seem to do a better job recently at the end of the second half, and maybe momentum carrying on. So that's the end of the first half as the Red Devils are down 22-7. to Thanks for tuning into this game so far. I've been Joe Vishoni alongside Nick Bongiorno, and we'll see you at the start of the second half of Red Devil coverage versus the Sonam Spartans. We'll see you then. Welcome back to Stoneham High School. I'm Joe Vicioni alongside Nick Bongiorno as kickoff is about to start of second half action. In the first half, the Red Devils put themselves at a 22 to seven deficit as they scored in the last couple of minutes of the second quarter on an 89 yard touchdown reception and a run by Ryan O'Halloran. The Red Devils had the momentum at the end of the first half. Now they're trying to pick up where they left off offensively and defensively. Nick, what do the Red Devils need to do in this second half to get on the scoreboard again? Well, the good thing over here, Joe, is that Burlington, they got their men out there. And I believe that they can do this. Cal Pena out there in shotgun. Definitely can throw the ball down the field. We've seen it happen many times before. Um, really. Just got to limit the turnovers. He has two interceptions in the game, which kind of cost him points. And Burlington needs to stop the run defense. Burlington for receiver set. Here's the run up the middle that Jake Doherty on the inside zone run. Picks up about six yards on the carry. And Doherty's going to need to have a big second half if the Red Devils want to get back in contention of this ball game. 
Jake Doherty, as we spoke of it before, Nick, last week had one touchdown, but two, two weeks ago against the Buccaneers, four touchdowns, 425 yards, fourth most in state history. Had a big week from him. Now back to Doherty once again on the outside zone play, and he's going to be wrapped up in the line of scrimmage. Forward progress is going to mark him up for maybe at one yard as he loses one on the carry, and that's going to be a third and five for the Red Devils. It's important to get off to a good start. You want to convert the third down and not be phased by it. While one team in the Sonoma Spartans have been fantastic on third down, only one false attempt, the Red Devils have been pretty terrible at this point. Trying to change that, Stoneham playing in a man formation. Now fakes the screen, Pena looking downfield, fires intended for McCauley, and that is caught, oh, Jake McCauley in the end zone, touchdown Red Devils. Just like that, the pena McCauley connection is back on the board as the Red Devils have a chance at making it a one possession game. Oh, how quickly it turns. They scored a touchdown on the exact same play to the left last week on the road in Woburn. This time, just switch it up, pump fake, go down to the right, perfect pitch and catch, McCauley beats his man, Pena lays it on the money, enough air, perfect arc. Mr. Blanchett, Mr. Holland, Mr. Uh, Liljegren would all approve. Uh, almost a chance here with Campbell Luck being so automatic, he might get a 21 score game. And McCauley with the great fade route, beat the safety who's coming over the top to help, and his corner. Just beat him with pure speed. There's Wheelock with there the extra go. point, and that Very is good. good. And the score is going to be 22 to 14. The Red Devils back within one score of this ball game. And now we got a close one as the Red Devils make it quite a game. And it seems like they're really burning Stoneham over the top as their safeties were not able to catch up. It seems like Nick on that play, McCauley just beat him for pure speed. Looked like Tyree Kill out there. Yeah, it looked like the cheat out there. Really beating his man, making a little move, not anything special, just a little bit of a go route. Takes it onto the side. Pena saw it all the way. And that play right there has Burlington from the back from the dead. And we talked about how much it would be great for the Burlington to get some momentum at the end of the half because now they've got it and within the last five minutes, now they got it within the first five minutes of the third quarter. Um, so that is huge. They could completely switch the momentum of the game. Bronton got already a um, defensive stop in the back in the end of the second half as well. Here's Wheelock onto the, the field time. after kicking that extra point. He's two of two so far today. Has not missed one this year except for a block. Here's Wheelock kicking this one downfield with confidence over to number one. He's going to take this ball up the middle, cutting back inside, and he's going to be wrapped up just across the 32-yard line. Kevin McShane on the return. So the Red Devils defense jogging onto the field. The offense for the Red Devils have kept up their side of the bargain so far in the second half. Hopefully their defense can get a quick stop and put the offense back onto the field. Yeah, it's going to be tough. They've been really, really pounding that rock all day. A couple more pass plays with Broach has loaded up the box. We'll see if um, they can actually, if the quarterback can take advantage of that instead of throwing um, some receivers who are open and missing. And, and Stoneham definitely in a different formation. Yep, it seems uh, like their receivers also act as running backs. So it's going to be tough. Yeah, they keep tossing it. They keep tossing it. and he's going to run it up the middle, and he's going to be wrapped up before picking about four or five yards. Tackle made up the middle by Nick Campbell. Nick Campbell having a solid game so far, reading up the plays, or beating his one-on-one -on -one option, and. Um, three times tonight being able to make a useful tackle for the And best. Nick, it, Spagunas, excuse me, the defensive tackle making the stop. And Nick, it's going to be very important for the Devils to stop Agri Agripopoulos if they want to get back into the game as he's been having his way, especially in the first half. Yep, they're not throwing any receivers out to anywhere. They're just loading it up. Bro, he needs to be prepared for that. Two again. fullbacks in the game, over extra tight end set. Again. Here's Agripopoulos again, first, first down and more. Takes an extra hit, Agripopoulos is going to be stuffed by the ankles and down to the 45-yard line inside Red Devil territory. Taking two hits and more and still picking up the first down. Looking like beast mode out there, just not being phased and being able to effectively push past the original um, barrier set by the Devs. Stoneham's version of the beast mode, Marshawn Lynch, Agripopoulos no, has been no having his receivers way. out to the right or left every time. They have not had a single receiver. A gap blitz. Here's the handoff to Agripopoulos. Seth, excuse me, uh, Seth. 
Russell on the carry up the side as a change of pace back as Agrippopoulos jogs off the field to give him a rest. Seth Russell, the change of pace back in between the tackles, isn't as hard as a runner, but can definitely shake up this Burlington defense if you give him a chance to break away. And back onto the field, Nick, we talked about it before. No wide receivers in for Stoneham as their running backs and tight ends act as both blockers and receivers. Keep now here's the handoff play. to Agripopoulos up the middle, Agripopoulos, and he's going to be wrapped up. Nonetheless, picks up the first down for the Spartans. To the 33 yard line. Tackle by number 73. Agripopoulos on the carry as he's been having his way. Two substitutions as number five, uh, Nick Groport, and number four, Seth Russell Jog off the field. Number 40, who is on the bench? We saw some out of him. Jonathan Neal, the freshman fullback, coming back into the game after injuring his hamstring earlier in the ball game. Here's the handoff on the power play to Agripopoulos. And he's going to be racked up. Excuse me, Agripoulos. Bringing up a second and seven for the Spartans as the Red Devils have not had their way in the running game regardless of how many people they load up the box with. Exactly right there. No, no, no answer at all. Around five or six minutes remaining in the third quarter as the Red Devils trying to get back in. Man in motion was Agar Bolas as the Red Devils offsides. are going to be caught off sides and that's going to be a five yard penalty. MK wants to pull his hair out. All these penalties taken at the line of scrimmage, uh, especially in the first week, they had a little bit less last week. But every time that it happens now, those penalties that just cause unnecessary yards to be gained by the other opponent and put them in easier position to run the ball is not what Dan McKay wants. Extra double lineman set here for the Spartans as they continue to try to road grade this team down. Here's Agripolis making a man miss on the outside before taking a couple yards after the contact, and he is going to be close to the first down. And he moves the chains once again, the chain gang, burning a lot of calories in this run, constantly moving, especially when the Spartans are carrying the football. Yeah, uh, it was a toss on a, on a receiver in motion right there. Nick Campbell read it perfectly. He almost got his, he was trying to get there, couldn't because the move that was made beautifully by Stoneham and it causes the first down. So here's Agri Agripolis in the backfield yet again. Chase, Chase is gonna take it on the quarterback, carry it over to Agripolis and he's wrapped up. By number one, Victor Fernandez. Victor Fernandez, rather, that's his first carry one, of the Ryan ball Mallory. game. Different to see someone else carry it. Second and seven. As it seems the Spartans trying to catch the Red Devils off guard with a different type of running style. Agripolis taking that first down as a break, jogs back onto the field to try to galvanize his troops. Meanwhile, on the defensive side of the football, the Red Devils in the nickelback formation, five, three safeties on the field led by Ryan O'Halloran and Jake McCauley. Here's the carry to Agripolis up the middle. Has a running lane and he is going to be wrapped up around the 10 yard line and just pass it. Flag on the field, it looks like it could be after. Yeah, it looks like came in late. We saw one late flag earlier in the ball game on Sean McGilvery for lowing the shoulder on the late hit. Let's see what the call is. It's going to be against the Red Devils, I believe. Yep. yep. Personal foul against the Red Devils. So the Red Devils picking up their second personal foul of the ball game. 15 yard penalty and that's gonna move them into first and goal territory. These stupid, stupid penalties for the Red Devils, Nick, especially when you get overly emotional into this ball game, you really catch yourself off guard and hit your team with 15 Coxley yards. Here's the carry up the middle, Agripolis, and he is through past the Burlington blockade. Agripolis finds the end zone for his third touchdown of the night. Heartbreaker, Joe, heartbreaker. As soon as you get that beautiful touchdown to cut the lead down to one score, immediately after, a nice long drive put together by the Stoneham offense. Same play over and over again. Bronze had no answer for it as they have not really added too much tonight. They did what they did best, run the ball. 
and they got another touchdown, and it kind of just puts momentum right back in favor of Storm. And the Spartans now double. The Red Devils score 28 to 14 as they come onto the field for a two-point conversion. They've succeeded on only one of them tonight. Here's the handoff given up the left side, and that is into the end zone. Number 25, Tommy Pinzi succeeds, making the score 30 to 14 in favor of the Spartans. But the Red Devils are not out of this one yet, folks. Whenever the Spartans get a touchdown, the Red Devils seem to have an answer. And hopefully Kyle Pena, the captain of this offense, can lead his troops towards the end zone for the third time of the night. And Nick, what would it take from this Red Devils offense to try to get near the end zone? I mean, the running is not an option anymore with a 16 point deficit. Kyle Pena's gonna have to keep going deep, but now they're not gonna make the same mistake. They're gonna put double coverage on their best man, on the best man that they see out there, Ryan O'Hower and Jake McCauley. It's gonna be very tough to get back into the game. Kyle Pena's gonna have to really make some magic happen with his arm and maybe even his legs if he has to escape pressure because they're bringing it. Burlington, um, not done yet with this much time left, but mental, but definitely you can feel the momentum shifted back to Stoneham. So the Red Devils allowing 30 points so far here. It's the allowed 33 points to the Buccaneers. Hopefully they don't allow any more in this ball game. Number 52 set to kick this one off, which is Valacanestra. That, yep. that pass is fair it. caught by the Red Devils. Across the 38-yard line, Jake, Jake McCauley fair catches it as the Brewington offense jogs onto the field, led by Kyle Pena and Ryan O'Howeran, who's had a big game so far. Nonetheless, the Red Devils still sit at a 16-point deficit. And the Red Devils, if you're tuning in next week, their next game will be against Watertown back in Burlington, Massachusetts, as they will be playing two straight home games. The Red Devils facing off here now against Stoneham, 27th ranked in the state is the Stoneham Spartans. Here comes the blitz, handoff is given to Doherty and he is going to be wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage. John Neal, great tackle. Yeah, you can't run that ball now. You can't run the ball. Everyone is defending for that run. They are not gonna let him beat them out of that. They're going to make Kyle Pena do what he did with Jacob McCauley and keep laying dimes if they're going to win this game. So second and three on a chilly pitch black night here in Stoneham, Massachusetts. Early start time for the game at 6.30. You can only count on that in the Middlesex division. Double it up on the right. Here's Pena, two Screen receiver, pass, fires it on the screen to Doherty, and he's going to be stopped. Easily read by the Spartans. Led by number two, Jared Grossels, and number 40, Jonathan Neal. Never, ever, ever going to happen for the Devils right there. That was not screen pass, any sort of thing that they're trying to catch Stone off off guard with. Um, it's not going to be tonight. They have to go straight here's, up and have to have Pena do it for him. Here's Pena back in the no huddle. Oh, Burlington, man jumped offside. jumped offside, so the Devils get a free play. Here's Pena, fires downfield. Why not? And that pass is tipped. Falls incomplete, but it's going to be an offside. Five-yard penalty against the defense most likely. So Nick Smart of Pena to throw it downfield if the penalty stands to be against the defense. And Pena so far definitely showing the ability and wanting to throw it downfield and definitely test this defense as it seems like their safeties are not as fast at recognizing plays. Third and 11. So five yard, five yard penalty is gonna bring- yeah, It brings it back into with a re more reasonable area. Just about 3.43 remaining in the third quarter. Doubling up to the right. As the... Here comes Pena. Pena, four-man rush, standing in the pocket, steps up. Pena's gonna run it himself. Kyle Pena showing his mobility. He's gonna be wrapped up just short of the first down. Taking the low hit by number Might have 52. Just short of the first Antonio Valatinescra. And at this point in time, especially at the field position, you're in fourth down territory. Yep, you're gonna quarterback sneak maybe. That's Pena's been pretty good at that. You know, to make Nick, sure. I feel like I, I don't wanna see them do a quarterback sneak, but it seems like Pena's pretty confident in his running ability. And it's definitely 
uh, available to sacrifice his body and put it on the line to, to pick up the first down. Well, last uh, play right there, he took it in a shotgun. He was going to try and get the first down with the throw. He has a big arm. Didn't see anyone get open downfield, so he just took it off with himself, pushed past the pressure in the pocket that ran by him, found the empty hole, was able to get very close to the first down and put a set up a fourth and very manageable now. As the Red Devils currently sitting in another tricky 16 point deficit with 317 remaining in this game. Very chilly ball game as it's the last day of summer, certainly already feeling like late fall as the leaves come flying down. Here the Stone of Spartans trying to get their third win of the season. The Rev Devils surging forward as well. At the end of the night, one of these teams will fall, fall back down to third place. Now here's the handoff to Doherty. And Doherty looks like he is stuffed short, and that's going to be a turnover on downs as the Red Devils were unable to provide sufficient blocking for Doherty. Oh, my gosh. That's not good. Not good. Might just lose some hope right there. You had to get that first down so you could keep the drive alive and maybe score and get within one point possession game. Barring the two-point conversion, and this not going to happen. So just the drive stalls halfway. 3-11 remaining, still a two possession game for the Red Devils, but definitely pretty disheartening for them as after that demoralizing effort, Doherty unable to pick up one yard. I will say though, it is pretty common for teams to get stuffed in those short yard situations when it seems like the defense knew a run was gonna happen. Speaking of a team that runs on almost every down, Here's the Spartans back to the yep. line of scrimmage. Most. And off it's given up the middle to Neal, I believe, and he's going to be. 25, Tommy Peasy. Tommy Peasy, rather. Gain of one. Coming in, he's five foot nine, nonetheless, right, using the most Johnson of his Magata. height and weight. Second Johnson Magada, the nose tackle, swooping in to make his first tackle of the ball game. Trying to make his presence felt, but so far, the Red Devils' defensive line has been unable to control the point of attack leading to Agaropolis and this very powerful Sonam front running all over the Devils. Now here's the handoff. Agropolis, Agropolis into the open field. Touchdown. And he has one man to beat Agropolis, and he is gone. Flag is on the field, so oh, it could maybe, come yep. back. If the play stands, Agropolis is going to be into the end zone once again. I think it's well, let's back wait to see the action. referees. Looks call. like they're calling this one back. Holding against the offense, 10 yard penalty, play is negated. And that is just what the Red Devils needed. I believe the holding call was on the right guard who got a piece of Nick Campbell and allowed that play really to develop. To the 31 yard line, but it's first and 10. So that's going to be a first and 10 for Stoneham back at the 31-yard line. The Red Devils getting pretty lucky there. Nonetheless, still at a 16-point deficit with the ball right near their end zone. Here's Chase. Chase gives it up to his man with a convoy of blockers, and he's going to be wrapped up, picking up about seven yards. It is Russell on the seven, Jake McCauley. So Jake McCauley coming over to make the tackle, the safety. Trying to get the Red Devils defensively situated. So far, the Devils seem to be disarray in this drive, Nick. Not doing anything right. Very unfortunate. Not over yet, as a flag is going to be on the field. Let's see what the referees call it. Discussing this one. It's going to be a false start so against the offense. Five yard penalty, and that's going to bring it to a second and seven. The second false start of the ball game for the Spartans. Their second straight penalty of the drive as well. As well, the Red Devils from their first ball game of the season, Nick, they were hit with 12 penalties, five offsides. Six holding penalties and a personal foul, it seems so far. Um, unless you count the personal fouls, they've done a great job in the, in the uh, penalty department. Yep. Here's the Spartans. Chase comes to the line. 
Drops back. Chase is going to run it as Agrippoulos is up the middle. Carried by number 26, Christos Agaropoulos. And Agaropoulos picks up almost the first down. First Flag is on, on the, the field. Maybe a taunting call. It was definitely way after the play. Personal foul, probably. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Stoneham. So unsportsmanlike conduct looked to be on number 40, I believe. The freshman Neil as he was running off the field. Or Agarop. Yep, or definitely says something to the referee. Can't say that in this league. We'll get penalized every time. So 15 yard penalty, that's gonna move the one back. That's gonna move it back for Stoneham. Yeah. But Nick, if I'm Burlington, that penalty actually is pretty unfortunate too, because it allows Stoneham to pick up more yards if they can get the first down and run more time off the clock. Yep, definitely able to do that. I suspect that Stoneham is going to be able to run more time off the clock because Burlington has no answers on this short little fullback runs and tosses they have. So some stupid plays so far from both sides of the ball, from both teams. As the play is gonna continue, clock is gonna roll down. Here's Chase. Burlington loading the line of scrimmage. Eight man box, Carey is given up the middle to Seth Russell, and he picks up about five yards on the carry. As Campbell makes a tackle, Thomas Pizzi of Stoneham jogging off the field. Number 40, Neal back in the game after picking up the 15 yards unsportsmanlike conduct penalty after chewing out the ref. So Stoneham with a second and five. The Red Devils defensive unit having a pretty bad start to this drive. Here's the run. Agripolis up the middle. Agripolis and he's going to be wrapped up by the legs by the Red Devils linebacker. Gain of about five. Picks up about five yards on the carry. Four yards rather and that's going to bring up a third and one for the Spartans as the Red Devils defense could definitely, a short yardage stop here would do wonders for their spirit in, at this time in the ball game. Storm has been so, so uh, different in their play calling today, isn't, haven't they? Just eight seconds yep, left. Here's the carry by Chase. Chase on the quarterback yeah, keeper, picks up the first, the down, first down and down. more as the clock is going to tick out to the end. Tackle by number 11, Matt Pinkham. Yep, definitely, definitely very inventive play calling by Storm all game, running the same two plays. And Bruins unfortunately not able to stop that with those plays. It would be do wonders for them if they could, and then it forces the Stoneham into out of their comfort zone and they would have a chance. Kind of gets a little bit irritating as a you probably see from a commentator's point or you're um, a Burlington and a fan's point, you see the same play getting run over and over again and your team can't stop it. It just becomes a bit infuriating. Um, but hopefully Burlington is able to stop it. And now here's the carry up the middle, Agaropoulos. Agaropoulos getting into Red Devil territory and picking up about nine yards on the carry, having his way throughout this game, proving to be very lethal as a part of this Spartan offense. And that's gonna bring up a fresh set of downs. making it a first and goal for the Spartans. Spartans offensive line led by number 70, Michael Driscoll, the big center who weighs 285 pounds. Now here's the handoff, fakes it on the counter play, and he is in for the touchdown. Seth Russell taking a late hit as the Spartans score for the fifth time of the night. 10 minutes to go, Joe, and 23 point possible deficit, and it might just be the end for the Roman Devils. It might take the first loss of the season. As the Spartans take a commanding lead, supported by shouts and cries from their fan section, staying on the field to go for this two point conversion. The score is 36 to 14. The Red Devils down by 22 points. And that was the Spartans' first score in the third in the third quarter. No, excuse me, 
of the fourth quarter. The Spartans. Here's on the carry. Up the middle to Agropolis, and he is into the end zone for two points. No surprise, as the Red Devils seem to have no answer for him in this ball game. Yep, might have been injured on that play. Injury timeout, though. Looks like Agropolis could be down on the field. So meanwhile, we have our man who's doing really, really well tonight. Uh, fortunately, to see him get hurt, Agropolis, um, after running in for the two-point conversion. He's injured. His whole teammate are just making sure he's okay. They're all taking the knee right now in hope that nothing bad happens because football is a violent sport. And you don't want anything ever like this. We saw a horrible injury that involved the fire um, department and ambulance to come in the first game of the season when Bronson won 43 to 33 and giving up the same amount of points as they are right now. I don't think they're going to put up the 43 that they did in that game with, with Doherty and going off um, the Storm's defense definitely better than the Bedford Buccaneers. I just don't want to see this happen. And as violent and exciting as football is, you never want to see a player go down in an injury like this, especially, especially as a talented individual as Agropolis has been in this ball game as the trainer comes over to comfort him there. It would be great to see him get up on his own will as he will do so. And Agro Agaropoulos gets up on his own effort and with a three touchdown and a cushioning lead it seems like the Storm Spartans can comfortably rest him on their bench as he's jumping around and moving quite well. It seems like the support from his home squad has gotten him back in the mood. Yeah, well, win percentage of Burlington right now is under 1% chance. Down by 24, you need, you definitely need um, three touchdowns with two point conversions, all of them, including not taking that much time with the clock, which is really hard to do with this great offensive storm running the ball. The same formation every play, and it's not good. Burlington needs some magic by Kyle Pena. Hopefully he's got some Fitz magic in him. And here's the Squibby. kickoff, squib kick. Oh, it's bouncing. And that ball looks to be recovered by Stoneham. They're wanting it. Let's see who fell on top oh, of it. Burlington has it. And Burlington is going to have the ball. Stoneham nearly got lucky on that one. None of the last 10 minutes remaining. And the Red Devils are down 38 to 14. As some fans walk by aggressively passing the camera. And uh, not a great fan section tonight from Burlington. You expect some more people to show up, especially with the 2 0 start, as you said earlier, Joe. Didn't show up at this game with Stoneham. As we spoke to it before, the last time the Red Devils started out 2-0 in a season was 2012, so it's been a long six years since then. As the Red Devils right now down by 24 points, still a three-possession game. Hopefully Pena can galvanize the troops and get back in. Four receiver set, takes the pressure from the left side, steps up, fires down the field. That pass is caught to Colhane. And he is going to be pushed out of bounds across That's the right sideline. Ryan, Colhane, Ryan Colhane picks up his first reception of the ball game and scoots out of bounds across the 40 yard line. Also on the stone of 45 yard line. And here's Pena back in the shotgun. Pena, four receiver set, has Doherty to his right. Dropping back, pressure up the middle, fires it over That's to his main. Play. Doherty out of the backfield, making a man miss, back into the open field and wrapped up across the 20 yard line. So Burlington moving the chains as the running back Doherty picks up a big gain out of the flat. Yeah, he's been doing that all this time tonight, excuse me. Um, yep. Uh, it's this whole season been doing that. Fortunately, limited tonight. Kyle Pena with a nice pass going. Uh, obviously, no huddle with this amount of time left. Here's Pena. 
Same formation. Has some pressure up the left side. Once again, the left tackle slot has been an issue. Runs it out of, out of bounds. Stopping the clock, picking up about one yard at the most on the carry. Line 31 to go. So across the 17 yard line is Kyle Pena on that carry. Trying to get things going. Here's Pena back out in the field. Struggling so far in this game, having even two touchdowns, passes, and two interceptions. So far, the Red Devils have yet to score on the ground, though, which is very uncommon of them. Now, here's Jake Doherty, and he's going to be wrapped up. Jared Grossels on the tackle up the middle, stopping Jordy, uh, Doherty, excuse me, and that's going to make it a third and five for the Red Devils. You never see Jordy get tackled in the open field like that on a solo tackle, but a great job by Grossels to stuff him there. Speaks to his agility and his power and ability to um, avoid that. Now here is Pena, has an extra blocker as Jordy fires out late. Pass into the end zone, and that pass sails incomplete over the head of his intended receiver, who I believe was O'Halloran, and just missed him into the back of the end zone, Nick. And that should have been easy points for the Red Devils. Yep, with that amount of time remaining, 8.47 to go. Every point, every tick of the clock is crucial if you're going to have any chance of getting back in. And you just have to hit, have to hit that touchdown pass by Penn, from Penn Hill right there. Missed it. 8.20. Now here's Pena back in the ball game. Pena has a four receiver set and Doherty back in formation with him. Moves him over to his right side. See what he can do. Stoneham playing in a cover one defense. Here comes the corner blitz. Oh. Pena doesn't see him, and he is sacked yeah. on the corner yeah. blitz. Johnny Neal, Johnny Neal and number 52 colliding on Pena, and that's going to be a turnover on downs. Nick, Pena never saw the corner coming off the edge. Nope, never did. He's almost got sacked. Just like, um, excuse us, he almost got sacked over there just like in the tuck rule game uh, where Brady did not see Charles Woodson off the edge. He couldn't see him on the edge there. He cut fourth down, sack, and you're not going to get out of that. That's what happens when you miss the open guy for the touchdown. You get bit, but you get like right back into it and um, cannot convert. And this game is pretty much effectively over with this much time remaining in the 24 point deficit. Meanwhile, here comes the offense, and they're finally going to pass, going deep down the field. And Number eight, no the flag. intended receiver there. Fantastic concentration, as that was Kevin McShane who nearly held on to it. And with this lead, you'd be surprised that they're not trying to run the football. But it seems like Stoneham is just trying to dig some plays out of the back of their playbook and try to give some of their backups a chance. Yeah, I think it's good sportsmanship by Stone not having to do the same play over and over. I feel like they, they feel like they're in a good position. If they have to win the game, they will run the ball like they have been. They kind of want to just take some chances down the end of the field, do some other plays because they feel like they might have this game won. So good sportsmanship not to like keep doing the same thing to Bronx's defense. Now here's Stoneham. Stoneham is going to run it up the middle, back. And he's going to pick up about 26 back in the game. Agaropoulos shaking off the injury and picking up the first down and more with a fresh set of legs. Agaropoulos has been a story in this ball game for the Spartans. While it Even on uh, after his injury, he still picks it up. As the Red Devils defensive line has been quite suspect in this ball game. Here back in the stack backfield, no wide receivers in the game to no surprise. Here's Seth Russell on the carry. Russell escaping and accelerating. One man behind him, closing down the angle. And O'Halloran forces him down at the one yard line. Great game, great, great touchdown saving tackle by Ryan O'Halloran. Nonetheless, Seth Russell takes it almost to the house. Yeah, O'Howard never quit on the play. You don't want to, coaches would love that. When you're down by a lot, don't want to quit on the play. He grabs him around, 
even though it might be a touchdown in the immediate future, you know, still putting in that effort, showing you're not going to go down without a fight. And, and Seth uh, Russell doing a great job just busting through the cap. And first and goal at the one yard line. Here's Gase. Chase, rather, he's going to run it up the middle. Touchdown. And into the end zone easily. Touchdown is Agoropoulos. His fifth in the ball game to no surprise, and what a fantastic game for him. On the other side, the Red Devils allowing 44 points in this ball game. Could easily be 46 as their defense has been a nightmare in this ball game. First two games of the season, the Red Devils defense seemed to be on cue. But going back to old days of past when the Red Devils couldn't stop anyone, it seems like their defense has been having to get your point here, Joe. You said that they haven't made one this season. Here's the fake. Hey, oh Number God. 12 is going to run it, and he's going to be wrapped up. I think they might so, have fumbled the snap, <laughs> Joe. And Nick, I think it's pretty obvious that they there's a pretty good reason why they were 0-4 on extra point attempts. And goals go for two points. <laughs> exactly, yeah. When you can't kick it through the uprights, that's what happens. When you have a kicker that can't do much with it, why not go for two? And right there, the holder reminded me of Tony Romo-esque in Seattle. Yeah, Tony Romo, he always had, you know, he had the spotlight on him, got them in field goal range in the Seattle Seahawks game. And after he got in the Seattle Seahawks game, he fumbled the ball, uh, but, you know, he still had a decent career. Um, I think he might have won the couple, like a playoff game or two. Um, now he works uh, with CBS and is a good commentator. And he has done a lot of Patriots games. So from football player to commentator, and now we're back here in the booth. Not really a booth as we're out in the fans section with the Sonam Spartans as they're really showing their support. If you're just tuning into this ball game, I'm Joe Vicioni alongside Nick Bongiorno as you're tuning in to BCAT Sports' coverage of Burlington Red Devil football. The score is currently 44 to 14 in a blowout here in Sonam, Massachusetts. The halftime score was 22 to seven. Now double that now with seven minutes and 34 seconds remaining. Can, and, the, can the devil in the walk? second half possible down 30 points to seven minutes 34 seconds to go what do you think joe very hard but it can do it always remember 28 to 3. well that was a 25 point lead now it's 30 and the red devils take the fair catch mccauley's going to take his third fair catch of the ball game not trying to test this special teams unit stoneham's made it made some pretty smart decisions everyone's seen the tape on doherty and how explosive he's been on the returns and so far in this game, no one has tested him. Nope, they're not going to test that, man. Jay Doherty's a monster in the backfield. He's a monster on a kick return, so they're not going to ever, ever give Bruins some momentum by kicking it deep. They're going to squib it or poach it and just going to give him the ball and rely on the defense. A very windy ball game in Chile as temperatures Chicago drop style. below 55 degrees. Here's Pena back onto the field. Four receiver set has Ryan O'Hauer in to his left along with Jake Way McCauley. Here's Jake Doherty up the middle, and he's going to pick up four yards on the carry. Carry by number one, Jake Doherty, tackle by number eight, Kevin McShane. Gain of five. No, no, let's sit on the edge. And that's going to be a two to three yard carry, bringing up a second and six for the Devils. Here's Pena. Pena drops back under the shotgun. And off, giving to Doherty again. Doherty go. getting into the backfield and open as he picks up more yards across the 50-yard line, showing his agility and how explosive he can be. Jake Doherty. First down, Burlington. That's going to be a first down for the Red Devils as they're trying to move this and trying to get back into the scoring position. Yep, got down by 30 points, 550. Here's Doherty. As he trips on the handoff exchange is, and is going to be stopped for Gary no gain. There's not enough communication, not enough uh, bronze and players on the same page tonight. Number 77, Nick Sire, the defensive tackle. Over 300 pounds <laughs> making the tackle. <laughs> Pretty good nickname for Skiri. And here's Pena, gives it on the handoff to Jordy up the middle, missing Skiri's presence as he takes it all the way 
to just about the 41 yard line before being wrapped up across the ankles. I'm telling, I'm telling you over here, we have, we've got the most funny hecklers um, in the Bedford. In, in, I'd say more in, like obnoxious than in, funny. In, but. in the Stoneham fan section right now, they're causing us to be a little bit out of the game. And give it back to Jordy. Why not? Jordy escaping across the right sideline, picks up the first down and more near the 32 yard line. And Jordy finally trying to get going. Unfortunately, very late in the ball game, you'd want Jordy to get going early in the first quarter. Nonetheless, good to see him getting his legs freshened up after that big performance in, against Bedford two weeks ago. Pena and Doherty, the two stars for this Red Devil offense. Also has O'Halloran to his right. Handoff is taken over to Doherty. He's wrapped up up the middle. As the Spartans could guess that one was coming from a mile away. No gain, second and ten. As... Burlington trying to get something going here as the clock continues to tick below five minutes. Here's Kyle Pena has one man to his right. As Stoneham takes their first time out of the entire ball game. Trying to get their yeah, defense. Well, they, Joe, they never needed it. They never needed it to stop the clock. They never needed it because they were struggling. They've been really pinpoint in their game plan and doing everything right today. Definitely running the ball was the, the thing that changed the game. Borland's offense looked like they might have had a spark to get them back in the game with the touchdown pass on the call, which made it only a, a small deficit. But now that deficit's been cut and double uh, ever since then. So, Joe, uh, well, maybe with this loss, you'd probably presume in the bag. We look ahead to next weekend uh, on Friday night. What do you think Brown is going to have to do to readjust and um, maybe just look at what mistakes they made today? Well, if the standings were how they would be, they'd be facing off against Watertown. The Watertown Red Raiders are 1-1. One and one. If, and first their opponent this week are probably going to be 1-2, and two, so it will be a very interesting game. The Red Devils will have a chance to get back in the win column then. Led by Pena. Now here's Pena dropping back. Pressured up the middle. Hit as he threw. Oh, no chance. Ball pops loose, and that is intercepted with ease by Stoneham. Pena took the late hit, and a little bit of a push from him. Pena's going to get flagged after his frustration really spilled out onto the field, pushing Stefan Chattel, who provided the big hit on Pena. This frustration is getting to the quarterback and this Burlington offensive squad. Yeah, you definitely know a number six has done it all today. The quarterback not really having to um, do too much in terms of actually throwing the ball, but intercepting it twice on Pena, immediately on the first play of the game with a nice run back and um, just playing well overall. Offsetting personal fouls against both teams. So offsetting personal fouls against both teams. Just getting chippy down there, not happy about it. So it was on Pena and both the defensive linemen that hit him. Could have been a roughing the passer penalty. Looked a little late to me. Nonetheless, the pass was intercepted. Pena's stats fall into this game as two touchdowns and three interceptions as he falls plus one, minus one in the turnover category, rather. Definitely a stat you don't want to see is through more uh, interceptions than touchdowns last season. Hopefully he was looking to improve through zero interceptions last game. As now the defense of the Red Devils comes onto the field in a five-man defensive front. Here's the handoff on the power counter play. Here we go. That's and number 40, one. Neal escaping into the backfield and into the secondary and wrapped up across the 50-yard line. Setting in some new players, doesn't get some experience, gets runs in there, and uh, number 10 gets his run. The freshman, Chris Dragoni, picking up the first down and more across the 50-yard line. Yes, but Sonam is also D4, so it's not like they're at the top of the chain either. Here's the handoff on the jet sweep. And the fake is up to number five. 
Number five, Nick, Rollport. Nick Rollport, the fullback, who's a sophomore, picking up nine, about and nine yards, and that's going to be a second and one for the Spartans as the clock continues to roll down below four minutes. Yes, fans start to file out. It's been a great, great game. There's been some fun moments, a lot of run. A lot of fun times tonight. The beautiful, um, I Good even job, though coaches. it's not turf, but it's a nice little um, throwback atmosphere. Like and um, the rock the wall in the back, just two, the beautiful Garrett night lights. Hope it's a good note. Oh, and here's the, the handoff. Really ball pops loose as Agripopoulos falls on top 25, of it, and that's going to bring up a third and four. With just about three minutes and less remaining in the ball game as it feels certainly like a late fall night. And the Red Devils are almost certainly at this point. The game is pretty much over for them, but a good effort from them. Nick, what were some of the bright spots that you really enjoyed from this game? It had to be some of those deep passes yeah, down the Pena field. Yeah, Pena had some good deep passes today. Um, definitely needed something he needs to improve on it. In general, maybe reading the, the defense, he had two interceptions that were caused by bad defensive reading. Although he did have one, that one absolutely marvelous touch, two two touchdown passes yeah, down the field. A little bit lucky on the first one from his own end zone. And um, on the one, that was really a dime on the second one um, to, I believe, to McCauley. Nick, I've been really impressed with Pena's composure in this game. Yeah, he's been he, hasn't, he hasn't had great protection, and he's been taking a lot of hits, really showing what it takes to be a leader of this team, taking the hits in the pockets, getting a little chippy at the end, but showing that he can be an elite quarterback from that perspective. One side of the ball that the Red Devils really need to improve upon is pass protection, yep. especially not too much from the yeah, interior, but from the outside is left tackle yeah, Chris Jones. Yeah, don't feeling like um, Eli Manning out there. His left his tackle line for the Chris Giants. Jones and Andrew Woods have had a lot of trouble containing their edges as getting the offensive line play on the sides will be very important for the Red Devils to fix later in the season. Just about a minute remaining left in the ball game as the Red Devils are about to fall short to the Stoneham Spartans as they continue to run it right down the Devils' throats. The Red Devils picking up their first loss of the season. A better start to the season than last when they started out 0-3, picking up their first win late in the season against Revere a game that was on a missed field goal. Unable to uh, be fully covered, um, and it sucked because it was a good game. Paul pops loose. John Magata gets the tackle for a loss. Nonetheless, the clock continues to tick down below one minute as the Red Devils are going to fall short to the Spartans. As fans are leaving the stadium, the Red Devils showed some bright spots in this game, especially when it comes to throwing the ball deep down the field. We saw some great plays by Jake Doherty running the football at the end, and Ryan O'Halloran going absolutely deep. But this defensive unit is definitely going to need some retooling if they hope to be in closer ball games in the future. And off up the middle. Down. I think that should end the Back game. Number seven, Jake Ten seconds remaining. And Stoneham's next game will be against the Wilmington Wildcats, who are number one in the division. But while the Stoneham Spartans get the win and stay 3-0 undefeated here at home, the Red Devils take the first loss of their regular season, falling 2-1, 44-14 here in Stoneham, Massachusetts. It was a great game from both sides. Nonetheless, the Red Devils fall short. Thanks for tuning in to this coverage of BCAT Sports coverage of the Bruinton Red Devil football. I've been Joe Viscioni alongside Nick Bongiorno. Uh, great camera work by Nick and color commentary. I've been on play-by-play. -play. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week at home in Burlington, Massachusetts, to take on the Watertown Red Raiders. We'll see you then.